How you doing everybody? Welcome back to Pokemon Showdown Voice Clips. Today I have a battle against Pandaponer that I had, a PU battle I should say, that I had probably not too long after I got back to school after being out for a week from being in the hospital for the appendicitis. So this battle actually happened quite a while ago. Um, I did watch it a couple of times through beforehand so that I can kind of look at what's going on in it, but it did take place a little while ago so this team is a little bit old just in case you were wondering. Now, the thing with this video is that I actually have access to screen capture software right now um, through debut screen cap, which uh, I received word of, I was referred to by LCS865, and I thank him a lot for it, but unfortunately my laptop is a stupid piece of shit, so I really can't use it to um, record that stuff, because I used it to try to record the stuff, um, and I used, you know, decent quality settings and everything like that, and it lagged like hell in the video, so like there were frame skips and a bunch of different things in the video that I really didn't want to worry about, I would rather upload something of high enough quality to where you watching it, um, the stuttering that goes on isn't going to affect your viewing experience. So we're going to keep doing this voice clip thing until I find a better method of recording this stuff, namely just recording this sort of stuff from my desktop. Plus this way it's easier for me to get these guys out for you pretty quickly um, and not have to worry too much about, you know, these taking two and a half hours to uh, render out and then like an hour and a half to upload. Uh, while I'm, you know, sitting in school trying to get all my work done and all that sort of stuff. So as long as these are quick, you know, and easy uploads and I can get them out for a decent amount of quality and you guys can watch them on the replay function of the website, I feel like this should still be a decent enough thing to do. So yeah, we're going to get this PU battle started with Panda Poner and uh, we should be ready to go in just a second. Alright, so as usual, we'll start the battle up on slow, and we will see where it goes from here, but believe me, this battle started out pretty hectic, so keep yourself prepared for that. Ready, go! So I start off with my Whirlipede. Um, this is a physically defensive Whirlipede. It doesn't have a Violite because Whirlipede almost has base 100 defense anyway, so I really don't see the need for a Violite at this point. He starts off with his Regigigas. He doesn't want to take any kind of poisoning because that thing is really bulky otherwise as long as it doesn't get status. So he goes straight out in his Combuskin and I guess set up some Toxic Spikes. Really I should have probably just set up normal Spikes because he still has the Vile Plume sitting in the background, but I set him up. So anyway, I switch out into my Lopunny so that way I can entrain it if it use, decides to use some sort of boosting move and then I can get rid of its speed boost but he goes for the substitute immediately and I'm like oh shit this is not good this is not good at all I need to get rid of this sub so I go out into my whale lord so that way I can try to get rid of the sub this thing is the wrong gender it's supposed to be male anyway well actually I guess it's not really based on the nickname it's not really but he goes for the sky uppercut and it does a clean 50% to this Whale Lord. Now, fortunately for me, that was max damage because the next turn he goes for Sky Uppercut again and he only gets a 45%. So I can actually break the sub with Scald. I knew I couldn't use Water Spout because it, it would have broken the sub anyway, but it wouldn't really have helped me in that case because it wouldn't have done any damage anyway. So I might as well go for the move that's going to hit just fine. Anyway, he goes for another sub, but I can't let you do that, Star Fox, so I'm going to go for a Scald again. Because I am Choice Scarf, so I'm locked into Scald anyway, and I just get his substitute out of there. Um, so he recognizes the fact that I'm just going to keep going for Scalds, and he realizes he has to just get rid of this Whalorn. So he goes for the Sky Uppercut and takes it out. Now this Combuskin is a problem, but I have two options at this point to go into in order to get rid of this thing. I choose the Ballsier of the two, and I go out into my Grovile. Fucking love this thing. I actually renamed it from Gambit to Gilgamesh later on, so I might refer to it as Gilgamesh here in a few minutes, but he goes for the sub thinking that he's pretty safe and that I'm pretty much giving up, and really, I sent in a Grovile on the Combuskin, so I don't even blame him for thinking that I'm pretty much giving up the battle at this point. So he gets a speed boost, he's all the way up to 4 times speed, he goes for the Swords Dance so that way he can get his attack up really high. I went for Swords Dance last turn, and I go for an Acrobatics this turn to fade out his sub, so now I can actually hurt the thing if I survive. But here's the beauty of this Grovile. He goes for the Fire Punch, gets a crit, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. He gets me down to my Focus Sash. Because the Focus Sash is now broken, my Acrobatics is now at a base of 110 power, and I can knock him out with it. So there goes a Combuskin. Thank you, Grovile, for being so awesome with your Sword Dance Unburden. Love this set. I love it so much. Unfortunately, it's weak to priority, so this Croconaut comes straight in. Uh, and goes for an Aqua Jet and takes me out. Although he really shouldn't have switched directly into Croconaw, honestly. I think he should have gotten rid of the Toxic Spikes first, but I don't, I mean, that's 
you know, hindsight's 2020 at this point, either way. So I go out into my Whirlipede because it's physically defensive, so I can definitely take some hits from this Croconaut, regardless of what goes on. So he goes out into his Regigigas, figuring that he can probably tank the hits from me, and he can do some other stuff to me. Um, he knows that it's physically defensive, because I've been sending it in on his physical Pokemon at this point, so he can probably do some special hits with this Regigigas, because that's what most of them run in this tier. I go for spikes, so that, that way I can get some residual damage on some other things that come in. And then I go for the Venom Drench, to knock down his special attack and his speed and his attack. So that way when Slow Start um, goes off, if it gets to that point, he will be less powerful than he was before. So that, he goes for Earth Power, it doesn't do that much, even without a Violite, um, Whirlipede takes that pretty well after the Venom Drench. So now I'm like, okay, well he's going to go for special hits, so I'm going to go out into my Lopini, who is specially defensive and can definitely take these hits. And minus one special attack, Lopini takes nothing from that Earth Power, and this Regigigas is slowly dying off to the poison. Goes for Focus Blast next turn for super effective damage, hits it, but it only does a little less than 40%, and I can circle throw him out so that way I can get some residual on something else. Turns out it's this Munchlax, and this is exactly what I wanted to see. This is the only thing that I need Lopunny for for the rest of this battle, because now I can take Lopunny and I can go for the Entrainment. Now that Munchlax is Klutz, it's a lot less bulky than it was before. It can't use it to Violate, and it no longer has Thick Fat, although Thick Fat wouldn't apply in this battle because I don't have any fire type moves to take advantage of anyway. But uh, now it can't use it to violate as long as it stays in. So I go out into my Soul Rock knowing that I can knock it out and I can take any one hit, especially an Earthquake, which I'm immune to. So I know I can take a hit from it at this point, from pretty much anything that he does. And, I mean, unless it's a Pursuit, but I don't think he's going to put Pursuit on a Munchlax. So he goes um, and stays in, lets his Munchlax go down um, to Stone Edge from my Soul Rock. Soul Rock's choice, choice Bandit, excuse me. I'm smacking my lips together and making saliva noises. Anyway, he goes out into his Krakenoff. I don't want to stay in on this thing because it's going to Aqua Jet or Crunch or do something else that I don't like on Soul Rock. And Soul Rock is definitely going to be helpful for the win later, so I want to keep it around. So I got in my Whirlipede. He takes a Crunch like a champ, takes a Defense Drop as well, but the Rocky Helmet damage to Croconaw will slowly kill this thing off along with the Poison. And so I know next turn I just need to get him down to the point where the Poison will KO him. So I go for a Poison Jab. It doesn't KO, but the Poison will do that for me at the end of the turn after the Rocky Helmet damage anyway. So Whirlipede getting a kill. Very nice. Normally, Whirlipede is not there for knocking things out. It's normally just there to do some spikes and some toxic spikes and some venom drenching. Just poisoning things all over the place, you know. So he goes out into his Vileplume, absorbs the toxic spikes. It's a good thing he did that now because that way he doesn't have to worry about it for the rest of his Pokemon, even though I think he only has Shell Gun that isn't poisoned at this point. So I got into Lopunny because really I don't have too much for this thing, honestly, on my team. Like, if it's faster than Soul Rock, then I'm dead. So I want to at least get some residual damage on it before I go down. So I go for a Switcheroo, give him my Flame Orb, and that way he will have a little bit of residual damage on him. I know I can't live this uh, Sludge Bomb, uh, even if I'm specially defensive. Vileplume is really, really strong. Um, but I found out that it's an Assault Vest set, so since this Soul Rock is slightly speed invested, it might be faster than Vileplume, so I go in with it, go for a Zen Headbutt, turns out I am faster, and with a Choice Band, that Zen Headbutt is going to KO as long as it hits. So that takes down Vileplume in one hit. Good job, Soul Rock. So he goes out into his Shell Gun at this point, now he's got Shell Gun and Regigigas left. I know that I, most Shell Gun that are run in this tier are not um, offensive, most of them are defensive with a Violite. So I go out into my Clefairy. It's got Magic Guard, so it takes his Toxic, and it's not going to take any residual damage from it. He goes for a Wish the next turn, so that way he can get a little bit of extra HP back. I go for a Calm Mind, so that way I can get my attack boosts up a little bit. This Clefairy, I think, is only one attacking move. It's only got Moonblast as an attacking move, but it's got Calm Mind, Wish, and Stealth Rock as well. So it's mono attacking, but it definitely does a lot of work for me, as you'll see here. So I go for a wish just in case he just had like poison jab or something like that. I wasn't really sure what Shellgon runs in terms of uh, coverage moves at this point. Uh, if it was a defensive set, then I wasn't sure if it would run any coverage moves. Um, and as we see later, he probably isn't running any coverage moves. So I go for the wish. He goes for an Earth Power. It does nothing because Clefairy has a Violate and plus one special defense. Um, goes for the Facade the next turn, and it does a decent amount considering he's on slow start. This Clefairy isn't physically invested, and even with a Violate, that's going to hurt a lot. But I just go for a Moonblast a couple of times, take him out. And then all he has left is a Shell Gun. And as we find out this next turn, I, I kind of figured at this point that he didn't have a move for me. He goes for a Dragon Claw. It turns out that yeah, he doesn't have a move for me. So I just go for a Moonblast to take him out. I didn't bother you know, healing myself up or anything like that because it wasn't really worth it at this point. And there goes the Shell Gone. And that's the game, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, that was a great battle, Panda. Um, I really enjoyed it. It looked like GG for me a couple of times there, but I guess I managed to pull it out. Um, 
just because of the investments that I had or because of Grovile having a focus sash, really. Otherwise, I don't know how I was gonna... Well, I mean, I guess Solrock might have been able to KO with an Earthquake because it wasn't a Violite, but it depends, really. Um, and hell, I don't even know if I would have been able to survive a plus two Sky Uppercut at that point because I am HP invested, but I'm not fully HP invested. I'm not defensively invested at all, so... I don't know if I would have survived it. Excuse me, I'm yawning. But yeah, that was a great battle, Panda, so hopefully we can have another one sometime, and uh, that's going to be it for PU for today. Notice I only said PU, so keep an eye out. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time.